Hi and welcome back. Um, today I'm going to be do, doing something a bit different. I'm going to be demonstrating some paints that were sent to me by the wonderful up and coming um, small handmade paint company called Deep Deep Light from Latvia. They reached out to me on Instagram and asked if they could send me some paint and I said yes please. And so today I'm going to try them out to paint this snow scene here um, and tell you a little bit about them but just to let you know um, this isn't sponsored um, it's not um, affiliated I just am trying out the paints that they sent me as a gift and letting you know my honest opinion of them as I use them and there will be a link below um, to their website so if you want to you can take a look at their wonderful products there will also be um, a code, a discount code, that will be active for a short period, detailed below, um, so that you can try them um, at a really good price. Here's the selection of colours they sent me, some half pans and some little, um, little spot testers. Um, from the top left, um, they've sent me gold ochre, pyrolusite, tough volcanic ash, one that I'm afraid I can't pronounce or, or spell, um, beginning with SHI. Chrome Oxide Green, um, Lapis Lazuli Genuine, Raw Sienna, Mayan Red, Ruta's Dream, Caput Mortem, Rose Ash, Juniper Shadow, Indigo Genuine from Central America and J Blue. I'm using a piece of Saunders Waterford cold pressed 140 pound paper. It's taped to my board at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees. I've used a large harky brush to wet my page in a sort of patchy way um, so that I will get some soft and hard edges. Now I'm using a small harky brush to sweep gold ochre across the sky and the land. And then I'll go in with some Mayan red. It's a beautiful colour, lovely for sunsets. I'll put some of that into the sky and the land. And then I'm going to add some indigo, which is a beautiful colour. It goes from almost blue black to a really delicate pale colour with lots of water. It's a really beautiful colour. Just going to sweep that across the sky and across the land where I'm going to have the snow. Just keeping it quite loose and sort of um, shallow diagonal strokes just to kind of give some direction to my washes. Just going to pull out that bead of water across there. I think just a few more very pale sweeps of indigo and then I th think it'd be then time to turn the board around and just allow some of the paint to run down um, through the brush strokes that I've created. Where it's wettest it's running down and it's adding a nice texture um, and some nice tone and shadow to the wet in wet wash. Now that's the first wash done. The paper is still all nice and, and wet and still workable. So I'm going to add some a line of distant trees. But I must say I'm very impressed with the delicacy of these colours so far. I think they look really pretty. Now I've got a small Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush and I've got a mixture of indigo and um, Caput Mortem on the brush. And I'm going to dot in a row of distant trees um, across that hill at the back of the painting. Um, and while the, the sky is still wet, the paint will gently and softly, hopefully, diffuse into the background a little bit um, to give us a nice sense of distance. Just 
The Caput Mortem is an amazing colour. It's incredibly strong. Um, I think I need to get a bit more indigo in there at the base of some of the trees just to balance it out a little bit more. But I really like the way the the Caput Mortem, the deep sort of blood red, goes with the indigo and with the pale pink that's in the sky from the Mayan red. I think if I use this small calligraphy brush, I can make the indigo really count a bit more, if you know what I mean. I can, I can fit it in around those um, spots and areas of the Caput Mortem, keeping them there because I love that red glow with the indigo. I think it's beautiful. Just keep adding adding in more of this indigo. Just being careful not to get it too dark as, as this is distance, but as it's drying back, it's drying back ever so light. So I'm just strengthening it up a little bit. A bit of a run back on the tape there. So I'm just going to wipe that off so it doesn't run back into my snow drift. I'm just going to take a clean damp brush and just take off that bead of water and paint from the bottom so, so it doesn't dry quite so dark there. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is paint in on the right edge. I'm going to paint in a sort of an evergreen bush. It's going to be the kind of bush that doesn't lose, it, lose its leaves, that's sort of blue-green, so that's why I'm using the indigo and my small calligraphy brush. And I want to just use very sort of random, scrappy, uh, scribbly sort of uh, brush strokes and just alternate maybe with the, the harky brush as well. Um, and just to build up a sort of um, a low scrubby bush across this um, the foreground in the on the right side sort of trying to keep it quite random I don't want to block in the whole area I want to have some areas of of light um, so that you can see through this bush in in places I'm going to introduce some of this Caput Mortem into it as well to warm up this very cold indigo and to keep the, the sort of colour harmony going and I think it makes a lovely complementary um, colour for this snow scene here. I think it really adds to um, the impact and the prettiness of it as well. The blue and the red look lovely. I'm just making sure that as I paint and continue to paint this bush that I just bring out some sort of areas that look like sort of loose branches which I may or may not join up with with um, with twigs and sticks later on but I'm just bringing up this shape and um, putting in some darker areas um, of indigo and there's lots of diffusion and colour mixing going on um, just subtly on the page where I'm just dropping the paint in wet in wet. A clean wet squirrel mop I'm just dragging it across the bottom and that brings some of the paint down with it and it just kind of beds the bush into the snow a bit. Now I'm going to go back into the indigo, a nice rich mixture this time. Um, and I'm going to work a bit more on the bush. I want to bring it up a little bit higher and darken up some of the areas. This indigo is beautiful um, and I can see that I can really build up some lovely dark areas, but it takes quite a while. I think there's an incredibly good colour range in the indigo pigment here. It would go from inc very, very pale, right the way, I think as I said before, almost to a, a blue-black 
So I'm going to build that up in certain parts of this bush along with um, along with the red that's there and we should end up with quite an interesting sort of focal point. Just dotting in here and there for some sort of stray loose leaves. So it's not just all hard edged. Just going to pull out some tufts of grass coming out, sticking out from the snow. I'll use some Mayan red to pull out some of the grasses as well to continue that sort of red and blue theme. And I think you could leave it there like that if you wanted to, but I think I'm going to just put some more grasses in and I think I'm going to build up the foreground a bit more, well, quite a lot more, with some grasses coming in across the bottom corners and maybe some stronger twigs and branches coming across the picture from the left. but still using the same colours, which is indigo, Mayan pink and Caput Mortem. I used yellow ochre, uh, gold ochre earlier, but that was just to get a slight glow in the sky. I've swapped over to a rigger now, so I'm going to use this rigger to flick out these grasses across the tape so that when the tape's removed, um, it looks like they continue growing outside of the picture. I'm going to keep going, it doesn't look very good at the moment, um, but hopefully once I've built up um, a bit more it will look okay. I'm just trying to balance out that bottom corner a bit more now using some Mayan pink as well as the indigo. Just going to bring those grasses up a little bit further, a little bit higher. Just want to curve them inward and upwards a little bit more into the picture. Just to break up that very plain area across the middle. Just going to thicken up that branch now so it looks like um, sort of a low tree encroaching into the picture um, but this time not an evergreen this is going to be a leafless bare winter tree just twigs and branches reaching into the picture from the left side I think another slightly stronger um, tree trunk or, or, or set of branches just, just to flesh out that side a little bit more and balance things up a bit. Just a tangle of branches flicking off with the brush towards the end of the twigs for finer twigs. I 
I'm just mixing up some quite rich um, indigo and I'm going to just um, and some Mayan pink. And I'm just going to use a bristle brush and flick it across the bottom of the picture for just a bit of spatter, just to add a bit more texture to the foreground. Now I think that will do. Um, I just need to let it dry now and then come back to it. Right, it's dried back and I'm just going to now put in the last dark, really thick layers of indigo into this bush towards the base just to add shadow and depth to it. You can see how dark the indigo is going in now. Just trying to keep those sort of squiggly random brush strokes. Pulling some of um, the brush strokes up a little bit higher just to add some shadows to this bush towards the top and across the middle but most of the shadows are going to stay around the base. I must admit, I'm really enjoying using these, these different colours for a change. I know I use quite a bit of indigo in my normal painting, but this is very, very different from the indigo, um, the tube indigo that I, I use normally, student quality. This is artist quality and it's beautiful, beautiful paint to use. Take your time when you do this kind of part of it because there's no rush with this because the paint is, it's wet paint but it's going on to a dry painting so there's no time limit to this. Um, you could just take your time building up this, this bush with its little uh, loose leaves and maybe twigs and sticks and dots and things. Just building up the impression of it, bringing up the leaves over the tree line. Um, sorry the horizon line at, at the back and that helps to um, balance out the picture a bit more I'm just going to put some dark, um, highly pigmented, and quite dry, thick indigo um, across the, the, the base of the lower parts of some of these branches, just to really make them pop a little bit more. Just defining a few more of the branches and twigs a little bit more. Trying to get things to sort of crisscross and, and to look fairly natural. And then with a fine rigger, I'm just going to fill out the areas of grasses with some thinner lines. just to finish off the foreground and to pull it together so that there's quite a lot of texture when I remove the tape and we see the bottom of the picture. Finishing touch, I'm just going to paint in a few birds, which I think will really help to just add a little bit of um, life to the this winter scene. Just using a fine rigger and some indigo. And I think that will do. You could do a little bit more to it. You could maybe add some berries 
um, a few more things like that but I'm going to remove the tape pulling it away from the picture so that if it was to catch the paper it wouldn't tear and then take a look at it and see what I think I must admit I've really enjoyed using these pans even though I'm used to using fresh paint from tubes the pans wet up beautifully and are very highly pigmented and incredibly easy to use so here's the finished painting and um, I think you know what I'm going to say and what I'm going to say is that I highly recommend these beautiful paints by Deep Deep Light. I think they're lovely to use, I think that they're beautifully pigmented, they're very unusual and of course they're handmade by a small company which I think is a, a really good recommendation because then you get the individual touch. Um, there's a link below for you to have a look if you're interested um, and also a promotion code that will be active for the time stated below. Thanks so much for watching and thanks for your support and I'll see you again soon. Bye.